Okay, we're here uh, on realagriculture.com with Matt Stanford again with the Canola Council. Matt, uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, getting your field ready. Yeah, that's right. So now that we've got our drill ready to go, we're chomping at the bit to get into the field. What do we need to know and what do we need to do about getting ready to get into the field and get it ready for seeding? And so one thing, if we're going to be seeding canola, is we've got to know what the field history is to be you know to begin with so what we want to do is make sure that there is no chemicals sprayed last year that would have a carryover that's going to cause issues for the canola crop this year so uh, there could be some group 2 chemicals with heavy residuals so make it sure that we're looking at our uh, crop protection guide to make sure that we haven't sprayed one of those chemicals which is going to cause us issues this coming year um, also if we did a fall burn off last year if there was any uh, MCPA 2,4-D, anything added to the glyphosate, we want to make sure that we've looked at the crop protection guide as well to make sure there's not going to be any carryover issues. As a rule of thumb, roughly uh, for MCPA and 2,4-D, we need about a week of warm weather for every ounce of the chemical to break down. So if we sprayed seven ounces of 2,4-D, we need seven good warm weeks for that to break down. So if, you've, if you have any issues like that, it might be worth doing a soil bioassay or shying away from canola this year. Um, once we've established that the field's properly uh, managed in terms of chemical history, uh, we want to be doing a soil test to make sure we know what's in the field for fertility and what we need to get a proper crop going and to get a good yield at the end of the day. So soil testing is very important. Um, I guess ideally you'd want to be doing a 0 to 6, 6 to 12 and 12 to 24 inch depth soil test. And that way you can establish what nutrients are present in each different layer of the soil and from there you can tailor your crop requirements. Um, in terms of field preparation, uh, making sure we've got a firm seed bed is going to be key because canola you want to be keeping it in that half inch to an inch deep zone and so if you've got a really soft fluffy cultivated field uh, you're probably going to want to get out there and use your harrow packer or some sort of a packing device to make sure you get that seed bed firm enough that you can control your canola depth and that's one of the biggest things that I've seen in cultivated fields is the people can't control the depth because the field is too fluffy and soft. Um, once we've got everything done on that side of things um, we want to make sure that we're seeding into warm soils. Um, one thing it, that's really improved canola yields in Western Canada is the move towards earlier seeding and it almost seems like all crops benefit from earlier seeding. Unfortunately you can't do them all at the same time. But canola, you don't want to be seeding it into two to three degree Celsius soil temperatures. It's not really good for it. It will germinate. It'll germinate really really slowly and it's going to take a long time to get out of the ground. So one thing to keep in mind is if you've got really cool soil temperatures maybe you should be seeding some peas or wheat or barley first and maybe not doing the canola first. Um, waiting till your soil temperatures are in that five degrees Celsius range is a really good starting point for canola and to establish that soil temperature you're going to want to be doing a uh, ideally a soil temperature at about 10 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon and about 7 o'clock at night for a couple of days in a row. That way you can make an average of where your soil temperatures are. It's really busy time of the year so it is tough to do that so at least getting out there and just sticking a, a soil thermometer in the ground you know maybe late morning and then after supper it'll give you a good baseline to go from but use 5 degrees is a good starting point for canola in terms of uh, soil temperature. Um, when we're seeding our canola as well, uh, there's a lot of different things that we can do wrong. Um, seeding speed is one thing that really kills people a lot of the time. And essentially, there is no ideal seeding speed. I get that question a lot. And the ideal seeding speed is essentially whatever speed is going to get you the majority of your canola seed in that half an inch to an inch deep zone under your soil conditions with your machinery 
and your moisture conditions and your your field preparation so all those factors put together essentially what it's going to boil down to is the wider your opener is and the more disturbance you're causing the slower you're going to have to go most likely to get those seeds into that ideal zone if you've got a really narrow opener or a disc opener you probably can get away with higher speeds but again you're going to want to be checking um, almost every time you fill I guess ideally what your what your seeding depth is because conditions can change within a field and especially when you move from field to field the conditions can change quite a bit so making sure that you're checking your depth regularly is going to be really really important um, also once we get the, the crop put into the ground um, there's quite a bit of research that's been done uh, out of swift current that shows that stand uniformity and plant stand really does make a difference in terms of yield at the end of the day and because people have come to me and they're like well I only had four plants per square foot and I got a pretty good yield but my question to them is how many bushels were left on the table at the end of the day because you didn't have that proper seven to fourteen plants per square foot and what the research at swift current has shown is that when you've got eight plants per square foot uniformly distributed and you go down to four plants per square foot that are uniformly distributed there is really no significant yield loss but at the end of the day in a field situation your four plants per square foot are not going to be uniformly distributed um, if you take those eight plants per square foot that are non-uniformly distributed and take them down to four plants per square foot non-uniformly distributed which is your real world situation you're going to be losing anywhere from 17 to 26 percent yield uh, from the research that was done based on soil conditions, moisture conditions, etc. So making sure we're getting into that proper zone in terms of 7 to 14 plants per square foot is going to be really important. That gives you room for some plant losses in terms of if we get a spring frost and we lose a few plants per square foot, um, if we have flea beetle pressure, there was some flea beetles in southern Alberta this past fall when we were swathing, so there are flea beetles around. Um, if we did end up losing a few plants per square foot due to poor seed to fertilizer separation, um, if some of the seeds did end up going too deep, you know, all those things factored together at the end of the day, if we don't have that you know, seven to 14 plants per square foot, ideally 10 plants per square foot is sort of the, the average that we take from that. Um, that, gives you plant, that gives you some room for some plant losses. If you're starting at four plants per square foot, you have very little room for losses. And at the end of the day, if we do end up losing some plants, you might end up being reseeding, whereas your neighbor down the road that got 10 plants per square foot doesn't have to. So in general, or is most of the canola in Western Canada seeded in that five to five and a half, or is that kind of the recommended? In terms Plant or a pounds per acre? Yeah, pounds per acre. I'd say the overall average is probably five pounds per acre in terms of canola seeding rates. Um, there are exceptions to that on either side of it. When you get up into the peace country, um, there's people that routinely seed seven to eight pounds per acre, um, and then there's people that also seed only three pounds per acre. Um, I guess the one thing I would recommend for farmers to do is to get out into their field. You've got to start scouting canola early to make sure that there are no issues early on and if there are we can take pre preventative measures to make sure that we don't lose that field completely. But um, I, I guess across Western Canada the average is only 50% of the seeds we put in the ground at the end of the day make a crop or actually make a viable plant. So uh, if we can get farmers out into their field doing plant per square foot counts and establishing what the average is in their field with their equipment, then from there we can start to tweak seeding rates, we can start to tweak different things. But until we have a baseline to go from, it's really hard to make recommendations uh, other than just to you know, recommend that they go with what they've been going with in terms of seeding rates. Um, and then once we got that information, all those good field records that are, you know, that at the end of the day are really good to have from a management standpoint anyways, from there we can start to tweak. Uh -huh.